Hello, Dr. Ron England, and this is Java Programming, and this is actually Lecture 1. And what we're going to do today is I'm going to be working inside of the Eclipse IDE. IDE stands for Integrated Development Environment. And whenever you're programming in any language, you're likely going to either be using a tool like Notepad, or you're going to be using some other tool that um, a Notepad or Notepad++ or some other tool that actually is an IDE that has other features that you might want to have. But today is all about getting started in Java and we're going to actually cover through some of the stuff that we're, at, we're doing today as we do this. So inside of the Eclipse IDE the first thing that we have to do is um, and, and we want to, I'm going to do the hello world the standard classic hello world. But I'm going to explain all the pieces as we go through because it's, un, it's important as you're programming in Java to actually understand a lot of the code pieces and how they're put together because it's not as simple as just sitting down and write print hello world in Java. There's a lot more to it. So inside of Eclipse, the first thing that we have to do is we need to create a project and I'll, but to do that we go file new and pro, uh, we can make it a Java project. We'll just it is going to be a Java project. So Java project. Now it's going to do some fun stuff there, but the biggest thing that we're going to do is we need to give the project a name. So I'm doing the classic hello world, so guess what we're going to call it? Hello world. <laughs> Not going to be very complex here. And if we do that, you should see that over here in the package explorer, um, should hit finish and I should be able to close the, the window. And voila, over here now in the package explorer, I've actually got this hello world that's right here. And I've even got this little SRC. And yeah, we're programmers. So instead of calling it source code or code, we call it SRC, which is where the source is. And right now there's just a default that's in there, but that's something that goes with all the Java. Now, here's where it gets complex in the world of Java. There's a lot of different language out, languages out there, but Java is an object-oriented language. And therefore, there's a lot of other stuff behind the scenes that you need to get a program up and running. It does follow some of the stuff that you might find that's familiar with C. It might follow some of the stuff that's familiar with other languages. But here's what we need to do to get started. Well, I'm going to go back to my menu here, because the first thing I have to do is I have to create a class to put code in to do this. Now, we're going to do it, and then we're going to talk about it. So let's do File, New, and over here we've got Class, and voila, I am now going to create a class. And you know what? The name of the class will be Hello World. I can make it the same as the name of the project. It's not going to cause any real problems. And oh, I've already built a Hello World. I'm sorry, because I actually did this once before. Let's call it Hello World 2. And down here, the method stubs that I want to create, I actually want to create the main. Now, I can go in and I can type in everything there. This is just going to make that code for me. So in other words, I could click this button, click Finish, and it will write the code for me. Or I can not click this button, but then I've got to go in and do it myself. Let's go and do that because you know what? I really like it when it writes the code for me. So I'm going for that. Badoom. And it's doing a bunch of stuff here. And um, as you can actually see, I had a Hello World already that I had built, but I'm, this is the Hello World 2. If I go to the Hello World, it's going to look exactly the same as the Hello World 2. Now, and that's the reason is because I actually did go through this once before, and now I'm going through it a second time, and the Hello World itself was already written, and therefore the other code that I wrote for Hello World was already there. So I'm going to actually, you know what, I can do this with the Hello World Java. I can do this with the Hello World 2. Um, and all I got to do is double click that. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take that line out because I want to actually use that old Hello World. Now, here's the next step. I first want to go, what have we already got here? Well, first, we've got a project called Hello World. And the project is just a place to put stuff. That's it. Okay, now what kind of stuff are we talking about here? Well, it's, in the world of programming, that stuff is code. You need to get organized. And, uh, you know, suppose if I was just writing a little hello world, I can make it simple and just have a little hello world. But you know what? You might have hundreds of classes 
with hundreds of functions. And you don't even know what those are yet. <laughs> Let's talk about what those are. So a class, and look at this code here. Everything in your code means something. So let's start with this, public. Okay, what this means is whatever I'm writing here is going to be public. And what public means is that it's available to the other code. The other code can see it. Okay, you can make things that are also, get it right here, it's going to be tough. I think you might be able to guess it, private. Private means the other code can't see it doesn't mean you can't see it as a programmer. It just means that the other code doesn't have visibility to that class. Well, this class is public. Now, the next line that you see here is, the next word you see here is class. What is it that I'm creating? It's a class. Well, what's a class? A class is not a bunch of kids sitting behind um, desks in front of a teacher. A class is simply a place where you store things like functions, we call them methods if they're inside of a class, and variables, and we call them properties if they're inside of a class. Did you catch that? We make functions, which we call methods if they're inside of a class, and variables, which we call properties if they're inside of a class. Because you know what? The naming is important. Because when I say this is a class property, you know that that's a variable that lives inside of a class. It's actually important. Now, what's a class? Well. If you have one function that does one thing, life would be easy and you would simply just write it and be done. But in the world of programming, you can have hundreds of functions. And a class is simply a way to organize those functions. Notice I haven't told you what functions are. I haven't told you what properties are. But simply a way to organize those properties and methods or as you might want to call if you live outside of a class world, you can call it variables and functions. Same thing, just where they live is important. So then the next line is, the next word is hello world, which is the name of the public class that you've got. That's it. So you've got the word public that says that it's going to be public, the word class that says that it's going to be a class, and then the name of the class. You have now defined a class. And inside that class, like I just told you, is a class is just a nice little storage container for properties and methods. So we've got a method, or as you might want to call it, a function that lives inside of a class. And here it is. It's going to be public. It's also going to be static. Now, right now, we're not going to worry about what static means because that's going to be important. And you've got to talk about things like instantiation and all sorts of very complex things. But you know what? For right now, it's static. We'll talk about different options there later. The next thing that you've got is void. It's into the void. Well, what this says, this next thing that you see here is what the function or the method returns. And void means it doesn't return anything. Well, what do you mean by return? Well, the concept of a function, if you're used to mathematics, is it does some stuff and it returns something. But if it doesn't return anything, it's void. So what we put right here is what it returns. It could be public static int, which is just an integer. It could return an int, an integer. We don't return an integer. And then what's the next thing that we have here? Main. Well, guess what main is? Main is the name of the method. So there we go, public, static, void, main. It, it's public in that the outside world can see it. It's static in that it actually is, uh, well, we're not going to go there right now. It's void in that it doesn't return anything. It's main as in that is the name of this method that lives inside of this class, hello world. Main lives inside of hello world. Main is a method of hello world. Say that. Now, I want you to say that out loud. The method main is a method of the class hello world. That is actually important because that will teach you to, to speak like a programmer. And how do you know that main is a method of hello world? Well, look, there's a bracket and there's a closed bracket. And it lives inside of hello world. 
<laughs> What's next? There's even more to this. Now, this should not be like, oh my God, my mind is blown. I have no idea what he's talking about. This is not that terribly difficult. A function or a method is a bunch of code that either returns something or does something. Or most of the time, it's going to do something and then return something. Now, this little parentheses and this little close parentheses, well, just like functions in mathematics, you can pass things to the method. Notice I'm saying the word method because it's a method. Yes, it's a function, but it's a method. Get used to the way we talk about this. And it says string, open bracket, close bracket, args. Well, what this says, and we'll talk about this much more later, is that you can pass it an array of strings. Well, now I've just introduced another word that you might not know what it means, array. Well, you're going to learn what an array is. But right now, it's just you can pass it a bunch of strings that are in some sort of indexed thing. And that thing has the name args. It has the name args. I can change the name args to something else. I can call it args2 if I want to. But right now, the name of the array of strings is called args. Well, guess what? Right now, for this program, we don't care. Because we're not going to pass it anything. But if you wanted to, you would have to pass it an array of strings and inside of this thing, it would be referenced by using the name of the array, args. And notice I can go args dot, and it's going to give me stuff because args actually is a string array of um, an array of strings. And I can do things with array of strings. But you know what? I'm not. The one beauty thing about the dot is this concept called IntelliSense, which shows you the lists of the methods that you can call on that type of object. Okay, The methods you can call on that type of object. Well, the type of object is array of strings, and it is called args, and I can do things with that. But I'm not going to. But you know why? Well, because that's not the job that we're doing here. Right now, we're creating Hello World. So in the world of Hello World, I need to print out a Hello World. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to print it out to the console. And the console lives inside of a class library. Let's do the, the system, which is that's a built-in one. You've always got it available to you. And if I hit system dot, System, now just remember system. Don't worry about it. You've always got access to system. It's an object that lives and it's global and you've always got it. And if you notice when I hit that dot, I got a whole bunch of different things that I can look at. But one of the things that I can look at here, at the very beginning, I've got air, E-R-R, -R, and it actually gives you, if you scroll over, it's going to give you some information about that. And what air is, it's, it's the name of the property of, and it's a property, and we haven't talked about properties yet because we'll do that later on, but, it, but I just want to be right in, the, in what we call these things. It's the name of the property that lives inside of system, and what it is, is it's a print stream, which is a type of object. But guess what? We're not going to use that one. We're going to use, we're going to scroll down here, whoops, we're going to go down, and we're going to use system, I went backwards, we're going to use system dot out. And out, by the way, is a print stream. Well, you might not know what a print stream is right now, but you're going to learn what a print stream is because it allows you to get things out. So system dot out is a print stream. And it's a specific print stream because it's going to have the ability to go to the console. And that, by the way, a out is a print stream. It's the name of a, out is a property of system. And the type of class that it is, or type of object that it is, is a print stream. While I'm saying these things, you're going, oh, I'm just going to gloss over what he's talking about. I don't get this stuff. Don't. You need to know this. Otherwise, you're going to be stuck all the time. 
system, global, object, there, all the time, available to you, okay? Has the property, out. Out is a print stream, is a type print stream. Print streams have all sorts of different types of methods, functions, remember functions, that, are, that they have. It's an object that has that. And what, the one that we're going to use to print out to the console is, are you ready? Print. And now if I start typing this, you'll notice that, it, that the, my little IntelliSense stuff just gives me the prints. And now I'm going to go L. And now it's gone down to, oh, look, print line, um, print LN. If type, the first one is type void, which is a print stream, which prints nothing. Well, it doesn't print nothing. It actually terminates the current line by line, writing a line separator. How do I know that? Or how would you know that? Because it says so in the documentation that comes up when you do that. Woohoo! That's not that hard. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to print out hello world. So now the second letter of that is print ln, open parentheses, and I'm going to put a, uh, now I'm going to put quotes. And I'm going to say, hello, world. How you doing, world? That's actually not what it does. And then I'm going to terminate the line. I'm going to do that by placing a semicolon. You might be used to other languages that use terminators or languages like, uh, like Java or languages that don't use terminators like Python. Okay. Now, all of that just to get a hello world out there. Now, you'd be thinking, man, why don't we just make that simpler? My God, you got to do all this stuff. You get a hello world, you got a class, and do a static main void, and you got to create a project. Well, the reason is simple. Java wasn't designed to just do hello world. It's got lots of capabilities. And you need to organize your code. And to organize your code, you need to place it into um, libraries or packages. And in there, you've got classes. And classes are pieces of organized code. We also, by the way, will often call them objects. Class is just the name you use to define the object. And that's what we actually mean, a little bit of what we mean when we say object-oriented program. And then inside that class, you've got functions. By the way, we call them methods. And inside that method, we've got lines of code. And inside those lines of code, we're using other types of objects and we're doing things. That's Java programming. Now, just get it into your head. That's what you've got to do to make it work. And we're going to do more and more and more. But wrap your brain around this. It's all to stay, keep your code organized. Organized code. Now, now that I've done this, I can run it. So I'm going to go over here to this green button, or I can go up to the Run menu, but I can go up to the little green button that runs it, and I go Run. And all of that work, and all that talk, Okay, I'm going to get the save and launch, hello world.java, blah, 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 and all of that work just so I can come down here into a little console window at the bottom of the screen here, and it's going to print out the words hello world. Well, you know, you could also say hello world, how are you, with an exclamation point, and I'll run it again, and it's going to ask me if I want to do it, and now it's going to say hello world, how are you. Seems like a lot to just get something to print out to the screen. But you learned more. And you're going to learn more. Right now, quick review. In the Java world, it's an object-oriented programming language. Code lives inside of a class. You will be responsible for organizing the classes that you write. Java has a whole lot of classes already available to you that are already organized. Inside the class, you're going to have properties and methods. You might want to think of them as variables and functions, but use the correct way of speaking about it so that you don't sound like an ignorant programmer. Then, those functions will have things like the type of thing that those methods return. And they'll have arguments that get passed to the, to the method. And the methods will have names. And those names, those methods will live inside of other things, okay, or live inside of classes. Those methods live inside of classes, and they'll do stuff. So, that was 20 minutes, but I'm hoping that you're starting to get the picture, because this is the picture. 
you can become a Java programmer. And programming is a wonderful thing. It's a wonderful career, but it requires a good mind on your shoulders, creativity, logic. It's right brain. It's left brain. Java is a challenging language to learn, but I'm going to be here with you. Java 1, hello world, and hopefully you're looking forward to Java 2. Everybody out are out here. Dr. Ron England signing off, and good programming. Stick with it. It's a great thing.